trusting in this and that and the other, but they'll never come to know the truth. So they accept Jesus Christ, God's Son. Amen. Let's go uh, today to uh, Romans chapter number 5. Book of Romans chapter number 5 with me this morning. Just a wonderful passage of Scripture. You're talking about wonderful words of life now. Oh my. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I was reading this this morning and it just blessed me from the top of my head to the sole of my feet. Romans chapter 5. What wonderful words. There's a song that goes like that. Wonderful words of life. Let's read this together in unison. It's from uh, verse 12 down to the end of the chapter, verse 12 to 21. Romans chapter 5, verse 12. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Are those wonderful words or not? Words of hope. Words of peace. Words of joy. Words of eternal life. Amen. Thank God for His Word. Father, thank You, Lord, for this wonderful passage of Scripture. The reading from this morning. I pray, God, that you might help us now, Lord, and uh, give us an understanding of your word. Uh, I pray, God, that each one that hears this message, God, today may be helped and blessed. God, thank you again for your love to us. And I pray that you'll bless God the message in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to preach a message uh, this morning on by grace. And my text is verse is that verse uh, 21, the last verse of that chapter. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. We are saved by grace. Amen. Thank God for His grace. Uh, grace overcame sin. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. Um, there's a lot of problems in the world today, and a lot of people look around at uh, all the different things going on. And uh, they want to blame this and blame that, blame this government or that, whoever in our life that's uh, caused us issues or problems. And, but the problem is sin. If you get down to the root of it, all right, sin is a problem. Sometimes people blame God for the way the world is today. And uh, I was talking to a gentleman yesterday, and you hear it a lot. You know, why would God allow all this to happen? God's not the problem. Sin is the problem. Okay. That has nothing to do with God. All we're experiencing today is the consequences of our actions, the consequences of our fathers before us, and we endure those consequences upon us today.
So that's why we naturally don't have a relationship with our Creator because of sin. All right, and the sooner we realize our sin problem, the sooner we can get some help. All right, we do have a sin problem. Okay, our hearts are black with sin, and uh, it's it's a real problem. And some people just don't want to come to the the realization of that because they judge themselves and compare themselves among themselves with others around them in their life that they know of. And uh, of course, they, they're looking at those that are more wicked than them and, and thinking, well, uh, they definitely you know, couldn't have a relationship with God or they definitely couldn't go to heaven because they're worse than me. And uh, we tend to think a little uh, highly of ourselves. You know? uh, but it still, all of us have the same problem before God. If you've sinned in one point, you've, you've broken the whole law, the Bible says. Uh, every sin God hates. Every sin God despises. So none of us meet God's standard. God's standard is perfection. All right. So we all have this problem, no matter who we are. And uh, it's interesting how people look at themselves and they try to justify themselves, even though they know that they're a sinner. And a lot of people view themselves as children of God that, that are just uh, kind of lost their way. Well, according to God and His perspective, we are not His children before we're saved. He does not look at us that way. We're the creation of God, but we're not the children of God until we're saved. He looks at us as the children of Adam. Those that are the offspring of Adam who rebelled against God and took Satan's side, God's enemy. And so God actually looks at us as being the devil's kids, even though he created us. Don't get me wrong, he loves us, but he doesn't look at us as his children before we're saved. He doesn't look at us that way at all. Okay. So for you to think of yourself that way, um, you're thinking way too high of yourself, and you're not viewing yourself from God's perspective. Because he views us like this. Okay, Filthy rotten to the core, depraved. You say, well, I'm a pretty good person. Compared to who? Compared to so-and-so? Or compared to God? If you compare yourself to God, we are filthy. We are wicked. We are depraved. And given certain circumstances in our life, there is no telling how low we can go, how wicked we can be, given the right circumstances in our life. It, it's just... It's, it's, I mean, you, you think about today, there, there's people in the world that want to annihilate not just five people, ten people, twenty, a hundred, two hundred, two thousand. They want to annihilate a whole nation of millions of people. How could someone be so evil, so wicked, that they want to commit genocide and murder millions of people? all in one shot with a nuclear missile. How is that even possible? Because of sin in our hearts. Because we're wicked. We're depraved. It's awful. It's an awful thing. And we all have this problem. And that's why we need Jesus. Amen. And so we see back in the beginning, if you go to Genesis, let's just look at that real quick. Uh, Genesis chapter 2. We, we have here the, I'll call it the free will test of God. God made Adam with a free will. It's a wonderful gift. Had a perfect start. In chapter number 2 and verse 16, here we have the test. It says, Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it, for the day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And he wasn't just talking about the physical death that would ultimately come, but he was talking about the spiritual separation from God. And a person that's born in this world, they're not spiritually alive unto God. They're, they're dead. There's no relationship there between them and their Creator. They don't know God. So not until a person is saved do they become alive or their, or their spirit is quickened. 
and made alive unto God. Now we see in chapter number 3, verse number 6, the failure of the test. It says, And when the woman saw the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And then we have the judgment, uh, chapter 3 also, and verse uh, 16 through 19, and goes all the way over into... Uh, down to verse 22 and through 24. Let's read verse 22. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us to know good and evil, and now lest he put forth his hand and take also the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. Uh, just a little side note here. In verse 22, who's God talking to? Behold, the man has become as one of us. He's talking to himself. It's the Trinity. Amen. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Remember over there, uh, back in chapter number 1, verse number 26, you see it again. God speaking to himself. And God said, let us make man in our image. He wasn't talking to the angels, because they can't make anything. He's the creator. Amen? He was talking to himself. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. There you have it. There's the Trinity. Back in Genesis. Amen? So we see that man failed. Adam failed. Our, our father uh, failed the free will test that God gave. Uh, and there was the judgment because of it. Right. Look at me in Psalm 51.5. Just to cast a little more light on this. Go to Psalm 51, verse 5. David shed some more light here on this subject. Psalm 51, verse number 5. The Bible says, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. That day when Adam failed the free will test and sinned against God, he represented all of us. And we bear the reproach and the consequence of his decision to this day. Okay. This sinful nature inherited from Adam is deeply embedded within us. You could say it's almost like part of our genetic code or something. It, it's just so, it's a spiritual thing. I know it's not, not so much that, but uh, it's, it's even more embedded. Okay. And uh, Adam could do none other than pass down his nature of knowing good and evil to us. He could not reproduce once he fell, once he sinned against God. He was fundamentally changed. Right? To his core. So he could not reproduce offspring in innocency like he, he experienced, like he had before he fell. All he could do is reproduce offspring now with a sinful nature. And it is, it is embedded in us. There, there is, we are a fallen race. That's what the world does not get. That's what they do not understand. If they could just grasp that truth, then they would be on the road to God helping them and receiving the love of Christ. Then they would understand and see God's plan. Why Jesus came. He was not just a good guy, a good teacher, a great prophet. No, it's God's way, His plan of salvation to redeem mankind back to Himself. Back to that state of Innocency, right? If we will, God will never take away our free will. What has He done? God has allowed man to just go His way. Right? And we've done so. And God has led us. See where that's gotten us. The world's a mess. We're still in a mess. Uh, we've tried to make the world a utopia. 
on more than one occasion. Civilization after civilization has tried their best. The Egyptians with all their spiritism, the Greeks with all their philosophy, the Romans with all their structure. Rise, fall, rise, fall, rise, fall, rise, fall. We ain't getting nowhere. It's because of that, that sinful nature, we're born with it. We're naturally selfish, self-centered, prideful, arrogant, greedy. We can't get away from it. Maybe you'd like to think that your child will be the first. It would be different. What? My son. My child. My child. No. Nothing has changed. It won't change. Yes, Adam was fundamentally changed that day when he fell, and his offspring ever since then has had that sinful nature. That's all he could do. He could only reproduce the sinful nature ever, ever have that innocency again. See, from God's perspective, you have to see what was going down that day, okay? It was not just Adam eating an apple. I'm not saying it was an apple, but it wasn't just Adam eating that forbidden fruit. And look at that, well, you yeah. know, okay, he chose the wrong tree. <laughs> there was a lot more going down. There was a lot more going on. Adam did that, he refused eternal life in exchange for the knowledge of good and evil. Remember the tree in the middle of the garden? Remember that one? Mm -hmm. The tree of life? He would live forever in that state in which he was in, in innocency. But he refused that in exchange for a knowledge of good and evil. Which he, he was in innocency, he didn't understand it that before. It was a good thing. But God took it very seriously when Adam sinned against great light. They were understanding. He had a very close relationship with God right before he fell. And so great was the punishment. God's justice demands it. God also took it very seriously when Lucifer and the fallen angels sinned against even greater light or understanding. So great is their punishment. God's justice demands it. Mm -hmm. Lucifer lived in the very presence of God. Those angels were there, right? In the third heaven with God. In His very presence. And so greater is their judgment because they had a greater light, a greater understanding. God's a very fair God. Very fair. God was fair with Adam. God's been fair with us. God's not the problem. We're the problem. And we bear the reproach and the consequences of Adam to this day. There ain't nothing anybody can do about it. You ain't going to change this unless there's a miracle. Like I said, a lot of people have tried. You don't have to teach a child how to do wrong. It's just, it's in them. That rebellion. No, I don't want my baby to, you know, it's just. I mean, even from a little kid, you know, they're, they're, they're cute little centers is what they are, you know. But there's just that their rebellion is in every little child. But fundamentally, they need a change of their right. heart. Okay? And that's where Jesus comes in. Okay? Concerning us being a condemned race, look at uh, what the Bible says in John chapter 3, verse 18. John chapter 3. Words of our Lord. John chapter 3, verse 18. The Lord says, He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not 
is condemned already. Notice those two words. Condemned already. Because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. This is the condemnation that light has come to the world. Men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Again, God views you as not one of his children, only his creation. We're the sons of Adam. And because of his transgression against God's law, consequently we are the children of the God of this world, the devil. Adam chose the devil's side. God's enemy. All right? Uh, God took that very seriously. Now you can look at it and say, well, he just, he just chose the wrong tree. He just ate of the, the wrong fruit. No, but this was a, a test of Adam's free will. He was given great light, great understanding. He had a closeness with God. The promise of eternal life right there in the middle of the garden. Bliss perfection forever but he turned against that and aligned himself with God's enemy Satan that's why Jesus said to those Jews in John chapter 8 verse 44 ye are of your father the devil he said that's why we're the devil's kids before we're saved God does not look at us as the children of God 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, talks about the God of this world, speaking of Satan, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. It's as if God took a step back and said, okay, do you refuse me? Okay. The devil's your God then. See where that gets you. And mankind just over and over, just gets more and more corrupt. And, uh, we're, we're seeing an increase in corruption in the world today. We just revert back to it over and over again. Uh, history just continues to repeat itself. Mankind through Adam refused to serve the one true God, choosing Satan as their God instead. Because we have a free will, God let us have our way. But we see it's not working out too good. And yet, God still loves us. That's the thing about God. You know, His justice demands uh, that we be punished for our sins. At the same time, He still loves us. He's still willing to show us mercy. Now, this is something that man can't wrap their mind around. You know, how that someone that's just what we would view as very, very wicked, really, really bad person. Okay. Someone who's maybe murdered a lot of people or just done something awful, awful crime. How that person can be forgiven of their sin and go to heaven and live with God for all eternity. That just, that blows the mind of a lost person. Right. <laughs> but that's, that's how deep God's mercy goes. That it cleanses all stain. The precious blood of Christ paid for the sins of the whole world, past, present, and future. Everybody's sins have been paid for. In full. It was more than enough to pay for your sins and mine. John 3.16, if you're still there in John, we have those wonderful words in the most famous verse in the Bible. For God so loved the world. Not loved our sin, but loves us. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever, notice that word, whosoever, anybody, everybody, the most vile, the most wicked that we could ever imagine, whosoever, believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Amen. Now let's go back to Romans chapter 5 for a moment. Romans chapter 5, again, where we started. Look at verse number 8. 
It says, but God commendeth His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. So, you see, even in spite of man turning against God, going their own way, choosing Satan as to be their so-called God, God still had a plan. A plan of mercy and forgiveness. And that came through Christ. And the only way to be redeemed is through His blood. We are justified, as the Bible says there, by His blood. The sinless blood of our dear Savior. Which was God's blood. God's holy, God's perfect. He's righteous. Only Christ could meet God's standard. We could never meet it. But He met God's standard. The man, Christ Jesus, God incarnate, lived a perfect life and laid down His life for us so that we could be saved. Paid for our sins in full in His own precious blood. Go to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter number 2. Verse number 1. And you hath he quickened, made alive unto God, uh, restored spiritually that relationship with God that was lost when Adam fell, who were dead in trespasses and sins. Where in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, uh, among whom... Also, we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Verse 4. I love this. But God. <laughs> so, uh, from verse 1 down to verse 3, you got the bad news. Yep, Adam fell. Yep, and he, uh, from then on, he reproduced a fallen race because he was fundamentally changed to his core. All right, that day. He was uh, separated from God, his children, from that point on. But I'm so glad. But God, who is rich in mercy. He's rich and he's got lots of mercy. Yes, he's a God of justice. He loves justice. At the same time, he's rich in mercy. For his great love, or he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come He might show the exceeding riches of His grace in His kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Why does God love us? Because of Jesus. Amen. Why does He show mercy and grace to us? Because of Jesus. It's all because of Him. It's, it's not because um, I'm anything. If he shows some kind of special favor towards certain people. Well, they're handsome or they're smart or they're whatever. No, no, no. He loves us all the same because of His Son. Through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. It had to be a gift. It must be a gift. Because it's priceless. This forgiveness of God. This eternal life. That we bestowed upon us. Not of works. Lest any man should boast. So, back to our text verse, Romans chapter 5, verse 21, that as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. I'm so glad that we can share the gospel with folks and tell them there, there's hope. Amen. There's hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. Not in religion, not in turning over a new leaf, 
not in trying to be a good person, judging yourself among yourselves, and comparing yourself to other people in the world. Well, I'm better than they are. I think I'm okay. And God should receive me. I'm a pretty good person. No, 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 no. Don't forget. Don't forget our fundamental problem that all of us have, what we inherited. Okay, we are the offspring of, we're the children of Adam. We're not the children of God. That changed. Okay? The day Adam and Eve fell. For the creation of God, but not his children. So we've been changed. And the only way to be changed is by the blood of Jesus Christ. That being applied to your soul. You by faith, believing on what he did for you. That he paid for your sin in full. His own precious, sinless blood. That's something none of us have. Jesus, he had it. He became, God became a man. Flesh and blood. Blood was flowing through his veins, just like it is you. It was sinless. He was not a son of Adam. Right. Right. He was conceived of the Holy Ghost. That's right. Joseph was not his father. Amen? He was not a son of Adam. We are sinful nature. Not him. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen? The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. That's how we can be redeemed. That's the gospel. That's the good news. Now, I've given you mostly bad news today, but I'm so thankful for the good news. I want to end with the good news today. All we need to do is be willing to admit, yes, God, I have a, a fundamental problem that I can't change. Oh, I can try and clean up my life a little bit. Maybe quit drinking, quit smoking, quit doing dope, and, you know, quit messing around a little bit, and, you know. But, eh, heart's still the same. Still not completely fixed. You know what I mean? I'm not not there. You never can be. No matter how hard we try. Only the Lord can make a transformation. Amen. Oh, He comes in, cleanses you, He changes you, He then lives within you. He gives you a desire to live for the Creator. Who then is now your Father. No, he's, he's more than just your creator. Now he's, he's your father, he's your friend, he's your savior. You live for him. Now you truly have a purpose for living. And hope when you come to die. Amen of eternal life. Oh, aren't we blessed? Aren't we blessed? Thank God for his love. Thank God for his mercy. It's all by grace. Freely given to us. We don't have to earn it. We just have to be willing to admit we're a sinner and be willing to turn from it. Like Masiba said, give up those keys. Yeah. Give them up. you got to give them up. Yeah. you got to let them go. And accept the pardon. Yeah. Accept the key from Jesus. Then you can go in. Go into heaven. And have eternal life. And be truly saved. I'm so glad that God made a way of escape. I'm glad that God made a wonderful plan. See, how about all those Old Testament people that lived before Jesus came? How about them? Because a lot of people view that Christianity didn't get started until Jesus came. Oh, that's not true. That's not true. There has always been those from, from Adam's time till now that believed in the true God. Adam's son Seth, his line, okay, that the generations of Seth, they were those that believed in the true God. From Noah's time, Shem. That was the line of descendants of Noah that believed in the true God. So Christianity is not new. Right? It's just they believed that one day by faith, God would send the Deliverer, the Messiah, the Redeemer. And so they were saved by faith as they looked ahead. Now we are saved by faith as we look back that He did come. Wonderful plan 
of redemption. Wonderful. When Christ came, it was the pinnacle of history. Even our date system is based on it. 2016 years ago, what happened? Jesus came. Amen. I love it. Even the atheist, the philosopher, the agnostic, when they write the date down, they're saying, 2016 years ago, God's son Jesus came and died for my sins. <laughs> Whether they like it or not, amen? It's no accident. It wasn't done in a corner. Hundreds of witnesses that saw Jesus after he raised from the dead. It was written in other books besides the Bible by historians and Jews like Josephus, who was not a child of God. He was not a Christian. It was verified. The Romans and the Jews try to cover it up. Remember? Jews, religious Jews come to the Romans and let's, let's just say that uh, his disciples stole the Bible. Conspiracy. Right? Oh, yes, but it happened. He's real and he's living today. There's still hope for the world. The salvation of Jesus Christ and his precious blood. Amen. Let's bow our prayer. Dear Father, thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for your love to us. Thank you for the message of hope that we have. For by grace are you saved through faith. So glad that you love us in spite of our sin. You commend your, your son, your love towards us and while we're yet sinners. Christ died for us and paid for our sin that in for Took all of our punishment, our sin, became sin for us, took our hell, took our punishment. We don't have to bear it. All we will is do is just surrender and yield and turn to you and believe in you with all our heart. And then we can be truly saved. Thank you, God, for loving us. I don't understand God why. God, you're such a good God. You are not the problem. Sin is the problem. It has been from the very start. We just are bearing the consequences. Thank you, God. And if you love to us, I pray that you'll bless us now as we go our separate ways. Pray, God, this week, God, we'll share this hope, this story, wonderful story, wonderful plan of salvation. God, with someone around us, and so that they might come to know you personally by faith, and have this hope inside, experience your grace. I'll go with us now, I pray. Thank you, God, again, for all your many blessings to us. In Jesus' name.